All right, so that flash of text right there was the description. This is from an HP Lovecraft story called Nameless City, and it's got reptile creatures in it from the fourth dimension or, you know, whatever the Lovecraft stuff is, and they give a pretty decent description. This is kind of a weird, bulbous, forehead reptile creature. And, of course, we're going to take artistic liberties with that as we go. Uh, but you got to start somewhere, so why not start with a Z-sphere that you dynamesh? And that's a pretty easy way to start, especially when you're doing creature type stuff. And I'm not doing the whole body because I just want to kind of have fun with the head. And of course, you need to do the whole body because you don't want to work in a vacuum just with pieces. And I'll talk more about working in a vacuum. But, you know, I want to have some fun first. So I'm just going to start with the head and see how that kind of dictates how the body goes. So right now I'm doing more of a turtle type thing. So a big underbite, kind of sharp beak, um, some weirdo horns, his mask, and snake hook. There we go. And just keeping that bulbous overhanging forehead. And he's kind of goofy. I don't know. But goofy can be creepy if, you know, you do it right. And he's got that predatory vision. So he's looking forward, not out on each side like a deer or big bulbous eyeballs like a frog. And those can be gross too. But um, you can also change the material like I just did with the basic materials. You can move that light around and evaluate your forms. Uh, I don't do that a lot. I probably should do it more, but just remember it's there. Gave him some shoulders there. And again, most of this stuff is going to be clay brush, standard brush, move brush over and over and over again. Now, there might be a little trim dynamic. There might be a little Damien standard brush. Might be a few little things here and there. Move accu. Um, but if you've watched Intro to ZBrush Part 1, you should be able to do this, no problem. This is This is the... No brainer, plain Jane, basics of ZBrush type concept sculpting. Let's get in there and use it like clay. And you can't miss. That's what it's made for. You'll have a really good time. This is the really fun stuff. I used an insert mesh cube, but you know, that's about as fancy as it gets here. And we're just refining. There's gonna be a little bit of anatomy work as we go. But most of that, again, is just standard and clay brush. Kind of dig it in and then a clay brush to pull it out. And really the only speed part here is knowing how to navigate and having hotkeys for the brushes that you use. There's nothing special beyond that. This whole thing took me, I think, about 90 minutes, give or take, all the way from start to finish. I shrank it down to about 10 minutes. The entire sculpt from the Dynamesh Sphere to the, you know, poor detail, wrinkle stuff, not the poly paint, but just the sculpt itself, took about 11 and a half hours. Um, oh, here, so flat material with a white color, or if you change your document color, you can make it a black color if you want to, but then you can just evaluate pure silhouette, mush some things around, and then you can go back and refine your sculpt. So that's a really easy way to get them some silhouette work. Uh, but anyway, um, very, very simple concept sculpting. And this is fun stuff, man. It doesn't get any fun with this, especially the subject matter. Like I said in the part one sculpting stuff, is old men and creatures are like, man, you can't miss. That's good stuff. Fun to do. And that's not to say, you know, good creature design is brainless, you know, you, you know, observation and there's good and there's bad creature design. I'm not even saying I'm a great creature designer. I don't do this for a living. This is kind of what I do for fun once or twice a year. So it's not like I'm a practiced, accomplished concept sculptor. I mostly pack UV shells for a living, nine to five. But you know, when I'm when I go home, I uh, I do a little bit of sculpting and, like I said, fun, fun stuff. Have some reference up turtles or your favorite artist for inspiration. or anatomy type stuff if that's what you're uh, you know, doing a focus on or cloth or whatever. You can always have that type of stuff up. And if you do have the reference stuff up, go to go grab a Quadro, Q-U-A-D-R-O. And that's a really, really cool free reference viewer. It's really nice to use. I'm not biased, but um, the guy who did the sculpt over later on in this um, made Quadro for me, well not for me, I asked him if he if he knew of a program that didn't, he's like, well I'll make you one. So we made Quadro and it's awesome to use and it's free so go grab it. It's a very robust reference viewer. So 
So mushing things around. He's kind of goofy looking, but kind of creepy looking. The basics are there. He's got long neck. I don't want to make this look like a guy in a suit, like a guy in a reptile suit. Uh, he's starting to approach that. And even when I get his full body in there, he's kind of that way. But, um, you know, do what you can and kind of go back and forth with the peeps and see what they like, what they don't. And again, I could hand this off, and Louise is the technical guy. He does all the technical things, but he also knows ZBrush. At least, you know, part one ZBrush, which is basically he knows how to open a file, navigate, and move, move around, clay brush, move brush, all the basics. So I can hand it off to him, and he can go through and make changes. He can hand it back to me, and I can go through and polish it. That's not to say, you know, he can, he's as fast as me, or he knows all the tricks, but he can art direct, or he can concept sculpt over, um, just as good as anybody. That's not rocket science. There's no paint overs, there's no 10 paragraph <laughs> explanations of what you're looking for. It's here's a file, let me change this a little bit because that's the way I like it. And even, you know, how paint overs and draw overs don't really answer all those questions because it could look, your draw over could look great in three quarter view. And of course, you can nail that and then turn it 10 degrees and go, oh, okay. Yeah, that's not going to work. Or even worse, you get it into your, your animation rig and you realize, oh, he looks really dumb when he's animating. So at this point, you know, once I have his body, I could decimate it down. Um, if you watch my GDC 2015 presentation, I go into a little bit more of our pipeline, which is do a concept sculpt, give me some material IDs. I can take through Substance Designer, Substance Painter, get an export, and then just get it into game. Evaluate it on the rig, animating, walking around, lighting and materials. doesn't have to be final, but it does have to be representative. And if you can evaluate, even at that level, you're answering so many questions right up front. In the planning stages, you're already refining. You're almost making in-game decisions, which is kind of scary, but it's great. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And it makes sense. You know, why would you evaluate anything outside of the final result? I mean, it could, you know, you could evaluate any way you want. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever only evaluate it outside the final result. Uh, but it makes the most sense. And, you know, but, it, you know, if you're just having fun, you know, there's no reason to stay in ZBrush and have fun and hand off files back and forth and... Yeah, do drawovers. I'm not saying don't do drawovers ever. I'm just saying, you know, in lieu of a drawover, you could also do a sculpt over. And adding some wrinkles, some crusty stuff, trying to see if I can't, like, do a little armor shell over his little meaty parts. His little, he has to protect his little organs that can kind of hang and pop out a little bit. Uh, this is what Z uh, Louise handed back to me. So you can see he went in with clay brush, clay buildup, clay tubes or something, and then just kind of made some shapes. And then I took that, and I tried to enhance it. You know, I took what I liked about it, and I took, um, or I took what he liked, and then I took what he gave me, and I took what I liked about it, changed the stuff that wasn't working for me, and then go from there. But I did like that kind of armored nose front thing, and then I'm going to put his nostrils way up high, just to kind of give him that underwater aquatic kind of feel. And you're going to notice the anatomy stuff, again, it's just standard brush, high intensity, clay brush to kind of build it out. Smooth move. Pure concept sculpting at this point. Snake hook to give them some little indications of teeth in there. They don't have to be beautiful. You don't have to drop little, little pellets in there for his teeth just yet. Just get it indicated in there. And I'm keeping it all one piece, give or take. I can pop something off, but I usually put it back on uh, just because it's so fluid to make massive sweeping changes. I don't have to worry about merging subtools down and stuff. It keeps me keeps me moving. And then I don't start locking things down prematurely. 